that's Abignail. Not Abignaily, not Abignali, but Abignail. <laughs> Come fly. Today we're talking about 2002's Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can chronicles the life of crime that a one Frank Abagnale Jr. took up from his 17th birthday to his 19th, I think. Don't quote me, I don't remember. It explores his entire life of crime between those two years, from when he started forging checks to when he started flying airplanes, when he became a doctor, to when he almost got married to Amy Adams, to when he was finally caught by the police. We have this whole cat and mouse game with Frank and Carl Hanratty, two men who were real and that actually became friends afterwards because Frank was wildly brilliant and Carl was just kind of a sad man. And they needed each other because they were both alone in the world and they didn't have anybody else they could rely on, and so they just sort of were dependent on each other. I love this movie because I envy Frank. Because Frank was a real human, and if you never read his actual book based that the movie was based off of, you should. I haven't. But I know it's going to be good <laughs> when I do finally read it. But so he was this guy who was counterfeiting checks when he was like 17 years old, and you're just like, oh my god, you're a genius. How did you do this? Like... I mean, watching it now, it just is sort of like an homage to how quaint everything was so many years ago when he like was counterfeiting checks and nobody could trace it and figure it out. It was so hard to like know for sure what he was doing and when he was doing it and how he was doing it and whatever. Or if he was doing it even at all. But it was hard because he was calling himself all these different things and taking up all these different fraudulent professions and you're just like, what? Now that would be impossible. So watching it, you're just you you admire him for being for his moxie. Was ready to get weird. <laughs> I like that it's autobiographical. I like that it's real. I like that someone out there once conned the government because they were just a scared kid, and it's sad, but it's sweet all at the same time. Obviously, it's a gorgeous motion picture because it's Steven Spielberg. It is truly just beautiful to look at. All the shots, all the costumes, all the sets, everything. It's gorgeous and it's wonderful. And I just love it. <laughs> Whoever they hired as their dialect coach was spot on because they were both perfect. Like, God. Leo and Tom are both obviously two very talented men in the first place, but when you add a good dialect coach, you just have the making for a beautiful two and a half hour motion picture. His costumes were really incredible because Leo at the time, I think, was like 30 or something like that. And he was supposed to look 17 and he really, really did. Like, there are moments when you're watching it and you're like, I almost thought I had a chance to be Leonardo DiCaprio because I had thought for a minute that you were younger than you actually are. They all just seemed to work really well together and they just made a really beautiful motion picture that was an intimate look at this game that these two men were playing with each other for two years. The opening sequence, if you skip it, you deserve to die because it's glorious <laughs> and the music is perfect, it's so fitting, it's so beautiful. Every second of this movie is great. Christopher Walken with the cat, not the cat, with the two mice in a vat of milk, which is my favorite Christopher Walken bit ever. I love this movie because you're watching someone's life story in a film directed by Steven Spielberg, so it's beautiful. And it's great. And it's just two hot men fall into a vat of milk. And out comes Catch Me If You Can. Also, that scene with that outfit, you know. Then you so near. Such a dream boat. Leo, I will love you until the end of time. They had put a fart machine into my sleeping bag.